In Grimm's fairy tales, the story is told about a man, a woman, their young son, and the man's old father who lived with them. And the old man was feeble and his hands shook, and mealtimes were especially difficult because the old man often would spill his food or let it run out of the corners of his mouth. The old man's daughter-in-law deeply resented the fact that the old man was there disrupting her little family, and she did not hide her resentment, and that often made the air very tense in the house. One day, the old man was eating very noisily at the table, and finally, in great irritation, the daughter-in-law said, if you're going to eat like a pig, you can eat in the corner. And she set up a little table for him over in the corner. Days later, as his hands were shaking, as he was trying to eat soup, he dropped his bowl and it broke. And the daughter-in-law said angrily, if you're going to eat like a pig and act like a pig, we're going to make a trough for you and you can eat out of that. And so they got a little trough and they put his food in there and they told him to eat out of that. A few days later, the son of the old father noticed his son, the little guy, the little boy, playing with some bits of wood out in the garage. And the dad asked, son, what are you doing? And the little boy looked up innocently and he said, well, I'm making a wood trough for you and mommy for when you get old. And the father went in that night and brought his aged dad back to the table. How do you treat your parents? How do you respect your elders? How do you treat your mom and dad? If you're a kid in the room, look up here. I want to talk to you for a couple of seconds, all right? Uh, if you're a kid in the room, do you talk back to your parents? Hmm? Do you treat them with disdain and frustration? Do you disobey them willingly and knowingly? Whatever your age, if your parents are still alive, do you honor them with your presence, with love, with gifts, with support, with assistance? Do you, do you honor them with kind words and with understanding and with patience and appreciation? Or do you show them contempt and ridicule and shame and disrespect and impatience because they get quickly on your nerves. Maybe never going so far to put them in a corner, but doing or not doing things which indicate your frustration with them. This question seems to be a, a, a very important one for today for several different reasons. First of all, a simple fact is that our society and our generations in our society are very quickly aging, very soon, if not already. The largest generation of people who will be living in the United States will be 60 and over generation. They've lived for many years. They're either retired or approaching retirement. And for many families, the cycle of care will be reversed. You know, rather than them caring for their children, you as their kids will begin caring for them. Some of you are already in that position right now. People are living longer, and we are coming to terms with the fact that we must care for them. How will we in America, how will we in the world, how will we in the church, followers of Jesus Christ, treat our elders, take care of our aging parents? That's what I want to talk about today. Over the last several weeks, we've been studying in God's Word some foundational and valuable values and principles that that, that God has taught us to do what? To help us stay on course with God's ancient commands. It's the study of the Ten Commandments. If you can take out your program and you can follow along, and we looked at them, the commandments in this way. Here's our, been our idea. Sure, it's been thousands of years since these commandments came marching down the mountain with Moses. Sure, our world has changed. I know that. We are no longer a desert nomads, primarily from an agrarian society. No, no, no. We are urban dwellers from a very technological age with $1,000 iPhones, aren't we? We're much further advanced. Hmm. But even still, believe it or not, the underlying tone of these ten laws are still the same, and I would argue very strongly from God's Word and from the study of our culture, I would argue that these values and these commandments are probably more valid today than they were 3,000 years ago. They still speak to us. From the days when 
when Moses brought them down from Mount Sinai. I believe that the underlying value and the tone of these ten laws are valid today. That's why we've called this series, From Sinai to the City. (laughs) From Sinai to the City. The value and the foundational impact is the same. Again, I would argue even greater today in this culture and in this city and in this country that we live in than ever before. So I want you to grab your Bibles. I want you to grab your outlines. I want you to follow along. I hope you've been here for this series. I hope you've listened to some of these sermons. It can really change your life. And if you've not listened to them, I want to challenge you to go out to our website where you can either listen to them on a podcast or you can watch the video of them from the last bunch of weeks. We've seen over the last couple of weeks that if we want to be people who value the God of the Bible, first of all, as we value the God of the Bible as our God of devotion, uh, we need to put Him first. That's the first commandment, put God first. And then secondly, we need to be people who worship God as He is, rather than fabricating an incomplete concept of Him. No other idols ahead of Him. We need to be people, thirdly, who revere the name of God and honor Him in the way that we, by the way that we talk about Him and the, by the, the way that we use His name and by the way we live. We said it this way, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. And then, fourthly, last week we talked about how we need to be people who, who maintain rest through our life and maintain this semblance of Sabbath through regular periods of rest and worship. Why? Because rest is important. God valued that and God modeled that, didn't He? So look at that list again. Put God first. No other idols. Watch your mouth. Rest is important. I want you to see this and make a note of this on your program. Uh, the first four values or the first four commandments encourage us to know and to understand and to worship God for who He is. Maintaining this vertical relationship with Him first and foremost because that's where everything else in our life stems from. That's the foundation of what we do and who we are. It has to start there. To develop a right relationship with Him for it is only through a right relationship with Him that we can ever hope to find peace in this life and victory In this life, it's only through a proper relationship with Christ and with God can we ever hope to achieve success in life. Well, in the next six commandments, which we're starting today, God turns his attention then how we as individuals can develop right relationships with the people around us. I don't know if you've ever looked at the commandments in this way. Having a it's kind of like a two-way street. Are you with me? Right? Having a right relationship with God, first of all, which will then lead to having a right relationship with the people around you. And God's first law of human relationships is focused on the family. It's focused on, first of all, learning to respect your elders, focused on, focused on respecting your parents. And I've titled this message, as you can see on your program, Respect Your Elders, because in this 21st century that we live in, our parental units vary in shape and scope and look. I recognize that. Some of us were here were raised with a mom and a dad. Others were raised in single parent homes. Still others were raised by siblings or by grandparents or by aunts or uncles and friends. And so regardless, regardless, the commandment hits us the same. Respect those who raised you. And while your parental figures may have varied, here's what I want to do today if it's okay. We'll just use mother and father as the text defines. But I think you'll understand that I'm talking about whoever raised you, okay? So let's read this together. Here's what I want to do in honor of the Word of God. I'm going to ask you to stand. If you can look at this in your, in your Bible, if you want, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, or you can look at the screen if you want, but I want to read it together. Ready? Here we go. Let's read it together. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You can be seated. All right, let's take a look at this. Give me your best attention. And I always enjoy for us to stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Amen? It's worthy of our honor. Give me your best attention. Here's here's the basic command. The words are very simple. Honor your father and mother. Nothing tricky here, (laughs) right? The key word, though, is the word honor. 
It's the word honor. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Hebrew word there, honor, you can see that there is the word kabod, which means to be heavy. The basic idea is to treat someone with respect because they carry a heavy weight of authority over your life. Sometimes we speak of certain dignitaries as being heavyweights. Have you heard that term before, right? That's exactly the idea of the sense of the Hebrew word here. It means to treat your parents as VIPs because they carry a heavy weight of authority in your life. This word honor also means to treat them with dignity and with respect and with deference. What it's telling here is this. You are to honor your parents because of the heaviness of their position. We are to respect them because of their position as parents over us. And I know, I know, I know, maybe your parents were just kind of just hardworking, just simple people that, you know, they just worked a shift hour work or whatever it might be. And, and in society, maybe they had little to no authority whatsoever. And maybe according to society, they might be considered lightweights in this world. But your parents bear a special relationship to you. And so you honor them when you recognize that special relationship in your life. And they may not have been perfect. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. They are heavyweights in your life. Now, let me offer this caveat as we talk through this. This commandment, listen to me, Listen to me, those of you who maybe didn't have the best relationship with your mom or your dad or whoever raised you. This commandment is to honor is in force wholly apart from the way your parents performed as parents. You with me? I like the way Dr. Ray Pritchard uh, said it in a sermon. He said this. He said, you may have had lousy parents. Yeah, unfortunately, many children grow up with parents who were absent or abusive, unkind or cruel. Your parents may have split up and got divorced when you were very young. One or both of your parents may have had a drinking problem. Any of those facts will obviously affect your relationship with your parents. But, and this is a huge but, right? Your parents' failures to be all that they should have been in your mind and maybe in the minds of others does not excuse you from obeying the fifth commandment. It does not say, honor your parents because they were honorable. It does not say, honor your parents because they deserved it. It does not say, honor your parents if they treated you right. It says, the fifth commandment says, honor your mother and your father, period. Honor them. The way your parents performed as parents, will certainly affect your relationship with them, and it will certainly affect the way that you obey this commandment and the motivation that you bring to the task, but it does not affect the central reality that you must obey it whether they were good parents or not. You ought to honor your parents because, in a sense, in a kind of a biblical sense, the parents stand in the place of God in your life. Now, just stay with me here because we're going to talk about all of this. Though they're far from perfect, and even the best of parents fail, your mom and dad can represent God in your life. And when you get down to the bottom line of this, this commandment matters to God because the way that you respond to your parents, those in authority over your life, whether you like them or not, often, often, often is the way that we respond to God. If you're hostile and angry towards your parents... You just might be hostile and angry towards God. If you honor your parents despite their faults and their problems, you're likely to honor God with your life. And that's why this commandment is, is fifth on the list. I want you to see this. This is kind of important. The first four commandments deal with our relationship where? Deal with our relationship to who? Come on, wake up here. Deal with our relationship to God. The last six deal with our relationship to other people. The commandment to honor your parents is the one that makes it easy to obey all the rest. Learn to honor your parents, to treat them with respect that they deserve. And you probably, if you do that, you probably won't have much problem obeying all of the other commandments. But if you, if you do not honor your parents, first and foremost, you may have trouble obeying the rest. So the fifth commandment is crucial. It's fundamental. Get this one down, and all the other ones might be made a little bit easier. 
All right, as we move through this, let me give you some reasons why. Because some of you are saying right now, well, you don't know my parents. You don't know how bad they were. I just have a hard time with this. And you're wanting to walk out. Some of you want to walk out right now. I know you do. Let me give you some reasons why. We're talking about our elders, respecting our parents. Therefore, we're talking about kids, us, kids. I'm not just talking about little kids in the room. All of us have one time been kids. We're still kids. And one of the first words that kids learn, children learn, one of the first words that they learn, does anybody know what that first word is? No. The first word they learn is no, okay? <laughs> know what I'm talking about? No. Maybe it's because they hear it so much as infants. <laughs> one of the first questions that kids learn to ask is the question, why? Well, there are some pretty serious warnings about neglecting this commandment, uh, but what about the positive sides? Are there any rewards for this for those who obey? Indeed, there are. Scripture offers, I think, a lot of reasons. I'm going to give you four of them why children should be careful to honor their parents. First of all, we ought to honor our parents, respect our elders, honor those who have raised us, first of all, because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Ephesians 6 1. Ready for this? Very simply, it says this Children, obey your parents in the Lord. What? For this is right. Simple. It's the right thing to do. Secondly, then, it pleases God if you honor your parents. Colossians 3 20 says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. How much more simple can you get on these first two whys? Next, then, it leads to long life. Exodus 20, verse 12 says this, Honor your father and mother, what? So that, we looked at this already a couple times, so that, do you see that there? So that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. It leads to long life. Dr. Pritchard, in his sermon on this commandment, says this, What is the connection between long life and honoring your parents? What's the connection? Those who honor their parents, he says, will enjoy three benefits that tend to produce long life. Number one, they'll be less conflicted on the inside. They will experience inner peace instead of anxiety. And number three, they will be free from damaging hangups from the past. Beyond that, when parents are honored, the family tends to stay a bit more intact. And when families stay intact, society is strengthened. And when society is strengthened, people tend to live longer and happier and more productive lives. So here's what he says. First of all, it's the right thing to do. Secondly, it pleases God. Thirdly, it leads to long life. Number four, here's the reasons why. It ensures good success. Now, let me show you another passage of Scripture so that you just don't think I'm making these up out of the blue, okay? Think back a little bit, those of you who have kind of studied the Bible, maybe been in church for a long time, and maybe will remember this. This may be new and foreign to some folks here. You may not, uh, may not have heard this story, but do you remember as the children of Israel, the people of Israel were getting ready to leave Egyptian slavery and bondage? Remember that? And they were getting ready to move into the promised land. Remember they're getting ready to make that journey? Moses, Moses gave them one more big sermon where he quoted these commandments again. And here's how he quoted this fifth commandment in that particular sermon. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 16. Look at the screen. Here's, here's how he kind of restated it a little bit differently as he was preaching to them as they were getting ready to, to go into the wilderness. He said this, Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. Why? So that you may live long. See that? And that it may go well with you in the land that your Lord, your God, is giving you. A little bit different uniqueness in the way he said that. Now, here's the deal. I've traveled quite a bit of life over the years. I'm not all that young anymore, all right? And I've worked and I've worshipped and I've walked with people for 30 years as a pastor. And I can speak with some authority. I'm not saying I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I've got some experience. I've seen this with a lot of people. I've been around the block a time or two. I've been around the block for a few years as a pastor. And I've seen this. Families that stay together. Children that learn to respect their elders. Children and kids that learn to respect authority usually have an easier time navigating life. Now listen to me. I'm not saying that they have an easier life. 
I'm saying what I said was they often have an easier time navigating life. What do I mean by that? Well, knowing how to deal with the ups and downs of life, respecting authority, those around them who help direct their life. Listen, because since life's ups and downs can be challenging, can I get an amen here? Life's ups and downs can be challenging. Often we need advice. Can I get an amen here? All right. The people who learn to hear and learn to receive advice and receive direction in the up times as well as the down times often fare better. There are some kids, though, some people, they just they don't want to hear advice from anybody. They just don't want to hear it from anybody. And I know that people can argue this point all you want. This commandment seems to be very clear. You learn to respect authority. You learn to honor your parents, and you can live a long, prosperous life. Not easy, not simple, not problem-free. Anybody here? No, never problem-free. But we can do that. All right, so we have some exegesis of this verse. Let's look at some application, all right? I want you to write this on your program. We can sum up the application to parents in a single sentence. Write this down. Write this down. Make it easy for your children to obey this commandment. Make it easy for your children to obey this commandment. There there is a sense in, in, in which if you want your children to honor you, then you yourself ought to be honorable. Well, how do you make it easy for your kids to honor you? Well, what is involved in honoring and, uh, your parents and respecting your elders? Well, let me give you a couple things, and you're just going to have to write these on your program. Number one, respect their role. Respect their role. Again, the Hebrew word for honor carries the, the idea and the sense of weightiness. Yes? You remember that? Learn to respect, regardless of their ability to parent, the people who carry a great deal of weight in your life. Without a mother or a father, you wouldn't be here, obviously, right? Without somebody raising you and rearing you, a, a, a caregiver of some form, you wouldn't be here. Give esteem to the people who cared for you. Secondly, Value their advice. Value their advice. Another way of honoring your parents and, your, and your, our elders is, is by value the, valuing their advice and their knowledge. I've, man, I've said this so many times over the years of my life, and I think about this more than I even say it. If I would have learned and listened to and retained the knowledge and the things that my earthly father taught me, coupled with the things that I've just learned on my own, I, mean, I, would be, I would be much further in life. But as I was going through my life, sometimes my dad would try to teach me something and I would dismiss him because I wanted to go do something else or my brain was someplace else. And if I had just listened to him and learned from him more then coupled with the stuff I've learned on my own journey, goodness sakes. Proverbs 13 Verse 1 says, a wise son heeds his father's instructions. Are there ways that you can heed the advice of your parents or your elders? And I know, I know, I know, people in our culture don't like to be told what to do, but I've learned the hard way. Uh, Moms and dads are usually right about the things that they tell me. They're usually right. I found out that my parents were pretty smart. I wasn't until I was about 25, 26 years old that I began to realize that. But my mom, she kind of knew what she was talking about. And that revelation was kind of painful for me to learn, but I found it to be true. And because of that, and, and I've been married and on my own for decades now, and my own three children are almost raised and out of the house. My dad is nearing 90 years old, but I still consult him on major decisions in my life. And the things that I'm processing as a Christian man and as a leader and as a pastor, I still call my dad. And I've been at this for a long time, but he sometimes is one of the first people I call. Why? Because I value my dad's godly, Christian, loving advice. And I make my own decisions, but I always want to be sure what he thinks. Value their advice. Number three, honoring your parents involves meeting their needs. 
This, of course, applies to those of us who have older parents in the room. Many of us do. People who are beginning to be dependent upon or, all, or are already dependent upon us. The Apostle Paul wrote this in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 4. It says, but if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and their grandparents for what? This is pleasing to God. As Jesus hung on the cross, just minutes before he died, what was the high priority of his thinking right then? The care of his mother. John 19 and verse 27, John, Jesus asked the disciple John to care for his mother. He met her needs as he himself was dying on the cross. So if you have aging parents, make sure that you care for them. That might mean involving physical labor and housework and cooking and driving them around and regularly visiting them and being patient with them when in their old age they wear you out. Maybe it involves emotional support. Whatever, meet their needs. Next, affirm their efforts. Affirm their efforts. I think God is telling us in this passage here, in this commandment, that we should make our parents and the elders above us feel treasured because of what they have done or what they have tried to do. One thing that continually taught me to honor my parents and their efforts was being a parent myself. I mean, this parenting thing is like the hardest job on the planet, huh? Can I get a witness here? It's like not easy. And some of you, if you have difficult children, which I did, my third child was a quite gregarious, talkative, rambunctious little kid. And I remember my mother used to watch him and watch me as I was trying to control him and lead him down the right path. And she said, I'm so glad you have a son who's just like you. <laughs> and there were moments with my precious little griffin that I wanted to pull out my hair. And I would look over at my father and wonder if that's why he doesn't have much. <laughs> it's not easy. This parenting thing is not easy. It's hard, and it's costly, and the cost doesn't, isn't just in terms of finances, but of time and energy and plans and dreams. If we can honor our parents for nothing else, we can honor them because they took on a hard and costly job. Lastly, if you want to honor your parents and honor our elders, forgive their failings. Now again, as I moment, mentioned just a, a few moments ago, no doubt some of you are cringing inside right now. Right now as I'm talking about honoring your parents, you are filled with pain and anger and guilt and frustration. And you're filled with all of those emotions because you have been deeply wounded by one or both of your parents over the years. Maybe you were reared in a home where terrible evils and sins were committed against you. And if that's the case, may I speak to you for just a couple of moments? Let me speak to you. Listen, friends, I don't believe that God is telling us to just get over it, to ignore the pain and, and to deny that it ever happened. No. Perhaps this instruction to honor your parents is a call for you to confront your parents, your mom or your dad, in love and in forgiveness. And as Christ has forgiven you, maybe you can learn to maybe even today, in this moment, to forgive for the first time. Perhaps this instruction brings about a call to reconciliation. And yet you realize that reconciliation and confrontation is probably impossible. Maybe then that you can pray. You can pray that you will not allow bitterness to control you any longer. 
and you can learn to release that. Maybe you can pray that you can forgive those who hurt you so that you won't continue this cycle of pain in your own life. Maybe that could be the case. Well, there you go. Commandment number five. Commandment number five, a good 21st century way of saying it is this, respect your elders. Respect your elders. At the beginning of this message, I said that this commandment is the one that will help us obey all of the rest. Why? Why is that the case? Well, because the first place to show the reality of your religion starts in your home. Starts with you. To say it another way, you know, religion that doesn't begin at home really doesn't begin at all. And so I pray that God will give us the ability, no matter how much work it takes, no matter how much forgiving is required, so that we can honor God and show respect regardless of anything else. And I pray that God can be honored in all that we do. Would you stand? I'm going to pray. And then Jonathan and our team are going to lead us in worship as we get ready to close. Heavenly Father, sometimes this commandment to honor our mothers and fathers is a little bit challenging to do because, because we look at our moms and our dads and we think, ah, man, there's not a whole lot there to honor. But yet, God, you challenge us the same, to honor them because of simply, maybe if nothing else, because of who they are and because of now whose we are in you. I pray, God, that you'll give us peace and strength starting from this day to do that which is honorable. And may, as we do that, we put our faith and trust in you. In your name we pray.